Are you planning a trip to Gokarna? If the answer to this question is yes, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll be sharing a detailed itinerary of the Gokarna trip. We explore not only Gokarna, but even the surrounding places like the Yana Caves and the Mirzan Fort. In this video, we will be covering around 12 to 15 places in a span of two and a half days. In this video, I will not just share the list of places that you can see, but we'll also give you the day-wise itinerary of how one can explore Gokarna. I will also share about the places you can stay and the places where you can eat. We will also address the question of how you can explore the city cost effectively and the last important question will be an approximate budget for this trip. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so now. This is Rakesh Jain and welcome to my channel Wanderer. <music> Gokarna is not just beaches but a small temple town also known as the Dakshin Kashi on the western coast of India in the Kunta Taluk of Uttara Kannada district of the state of Karnataka. Bangalore to Gokarna is around 500 kilometers. Gokarna to Goa is around 145 kilometers. We reached Gokarna at around 6.30 am by train and after checking in our luggage and settling down we started the exploration of this beautiful town. Ramaratirtham was the nearest spot, maybe around 1 to 1.5 kilometers, and hence we decided to explore that first by walking along the beach side. We finally arrived at Ramaratirtham, where Lord Rama has done meditation and prayer. The water flows here 365 days, 24 by 7. People are supposed to take bath and then go towards the temple. Let's walk towards the temple. It is written in Canada, Shandilya Maharaj Temple. The view of this location is really nice. It's like looking at the sea beach from a height. Just 100 meters from the Ramaratirtha, there is a rock carving that you can see and I'm taking you out there now. See, that is the rock carving that I was talking about. It looks like a lady's face which is carved on a rock with a bindi. This is done by some foreign artists. The year and the date are unknown. Whatever and whoever has done it, it is really beautiful. The place was so beautiful, we decided to explore a bit further. After all, we are going to be here for three days. The view is indeed beautiful. And if you don't want to walk, at least spend some time here. We decided to head towards our next destination, Mirjan Fort, as the fort closes around 5 p.m. From Ramaratirtham, the Mirzan Fort was around 22 km. The nearby places we can always explore later. This fort is known for its triumphant history and the architectural elegance. It is one of the best places to visit in Karnataka. I am standing right here at the Mirzan Fort entrance. It's uh, actually uh, drizzling. I must say it's really beautiful and especially the fort is uh, completely covered with a you know uh, a layer of uh, green algae and uh, maybe in this uh, monsoon season you know it has a different uh, charm i would say see the four timings better to be here by around 4 pm this 16th century fort boasts of cultural glory and the distinguished history the origin of the fort has not one but many different versions According to the most popular version, the fort was constructed by Rani Chenna Bhaira Devi, the Queen of Garusopa. Rani Chenna Bhaira Devi, the Jain Queen of Garusopa, the Pepper Queen of India, ruled for 54 years, the longest reign by any Indian woman ruler. The Portuguese called her the Pepper Queen. It was under her rule that the places within the kingdom like Honavar and Bhatkala flourished as international and national trade centers. Items like pepper, beetle nut and nutmeg 
were being exported to countries in Europe and in the Middle East. That's the rich history of this port. Hi. Hi. To fuel ourselves, we stopped here for a cup of tea, but ended up eating the freshly made hot banana buns. In fact, uh, I stopped here at this hotel only for uh, tea. But uh, when I saw him making the buns, I really, you know, wanted to taste it. And uh, I must say, it's really, really nice. And this hotel is just uh, on the way towards uh, Mirzan Fort. We are now heading towards the Kutle Beach, very near to the Kokana town to experience the sunset. I have heard it's a very beautiful view of the sunset from the Kutle Beach. See the view of the Kudle beach from here, even though we have not reached the beach yet. Trust me, if you enjoy driving, you will love the place. It is only later we realize there is another entrance to this beach. This is the Kudle beach, relatively less crowded. Some people enjoy sports, I too love frisbee and some enjoying a stroll along the beach. Well, I enjoyed all this and watching these waves and the movement of clouds. As it was drizzling, I enjoyed this moment too when the rays of the sun was partially visible through the clouds. I am standing right in front of the Mahabaleshwara temple at Gokarna and in case if you are thinking that uh, Gokarna is all about beaches then yes you are partially right. Gokarna is also known for its spiritual aspect like how in North India people go to Varanasi or Banaras to immerse the ashes of their deceased family members so do the people from South India visit Gokarna especially from the states of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra to immerse the ashes of their deceased family members. Now, one more important thing. Before you visit this uh, temple, you need to be wearing a panche or lungi or a dhodi, whatever you call it as. And then only the entry inside the temple is allowed. The second day early morning, I learned how to wear a dhoti also. Camera will not be allowed inside the inner sanctum. And let me tell you the importance of this temple meanwhile. The Mahabaleshwara temple of Gokarna houses the Atmalinga of Lord Shiva. The temple's history dates back to the age of Ramayana. Atmalinga, the soul of Shiva which is supposed to give its possessor immortality and very powerful to be defeated by anyone. Ravana was given the Atmalinga on the condition that he will not place the Atmalinga on the ground. Ravana was an ardent Brahmin and he could not skip the Sandhya Vandana. He gave it to Ganeshji who had disguised as a Brahmin. Ganeshji agreed on the condition that he would call out Ravana's name three times in the situation where Ravana fails to answer his calls, he would keep the Atmalinga on the ground. The darshan hardly took us 20 to 30 minutes. Today we are heading towards the Yana Caves and the Vibhuti Falls. On our way, there are many places and we will explore them also. See this plant, it's not that it has rained and it is submerged in water. There is a mangrove forest here and I'm trying to find that. These trees, as you can see, their roots grow above the surface of the earth. I do not know what this place is called, but it's near Sani Katta. This is the mangrove forest. There are two advantages of this mangrove forest. One, it prevents soil erosion. Two, fish lays egg closer to the mangrove forest. Mangrove forest grows near the river and not the sea water. I have heard that in Sundarbans also you have the mangrove forest. This place is called Sanikatta. The salt is being made here. Half a kilometer from here is the Agnashini river. When this Agnashini river meets the sea, the backwater flows into this place. During the high tide, the water gets collected here, but it doesn't flow back. Once the water evaporates, the salt is left behind. It is said that this place was also connected with the Dandi March. Salt making is here for centuries.
I am at a place which is uh, all over surrounded by water. Let me just show you a 360 degree view of it. If you have time, you must visit this place. I haven't seen such a beautiful place before. Right now, no fisherman is around. Else, the boat ride would have been fun. Well, after exploring the mangrove forest, we straight away head towards the Vibhuti Falls and the Yana Caves. Except for some stretch, you will just love the drive through this lush greenery. Gokarna to Yana Caves is roughly around 55 kilometers. Make sure you have enough petrol to come back also as there are no petrol pumps on the way. We reach Vibhuti Falls after paying an entry fee of Rs 20 per head. On the way, you will also find beautiful small water streams. Vibhuti Falls gets its name from the limestone rock found in the vicinity of the waterfall. The waterfall is surrounded by huge rocks and various limestone structures. As per the Itihasa or Purana, Vibhuti Falls is formed by the washing away of ashes from burning of Bhasmasura. Vibhuti Falls is situated amidst Hensed forest named Sahyadri Forest. It is also popularly known as the Babagi Falls because of a small village named Babagi located in its vicinity. It was drizzling, and after driving for almost 9 kilometers, we reached Yana Caves. From the parking stand, just another 500 meters of walk towards this cave. Yana Caves is located amongst the evergreen forest of the Sahyadri Mountains. It is a famous trekking place. Located right in the middle of forest in Kumta, the marvelous rocks stand tall at a height of 390 feet. The humongous rocks have two distinct peaks. One is the Bhaireshwara Shikara, which is the tallest peak, and the second is the Mohini Shikara, which is right opposite to the Bhaireshwara peak. Yana Caves are paradise of limestone rocks, famous for its unique black crystalline limestone rock. It is a heaven for rock climbers. The area is known for its majestic mountains a variety of rocks formation, trickling waterfalls and a holy temple. You can also go to hiking to Vibhuti Falls and a camp overnight there. Yana Caves is one of the finest creations of nature. Pitch black in color, the cave is formed by cast limestone well known for its unique structure and pattern of formation. The Yana village enjoys quite a rocky landscape owing to the majestic western ghats. The contrast of the magnificent black caves against the lush green trees in the forest is an absolute delight to travelers and tourists. Our next destination was Om Beach. I am so excited and glad you know that I am at the Om Beach. Om Beach is one of the most famous tourist beaches and it attracts a large number of crowd and even foreign tourists. I am actually standing right at the center of the Om symbol you can say. If I could uh, represent this uh, aerially then probably the Om symbol would start from there and then that very feeling that I am standing on some point of this holy symbol filled my heart with some kind of happiness. It was drizzling and this time-lapse video really amazed me. We spent some time here before heading back to the town. The trip to Gokarna 
is incomplete without visiting the Mahaganpati temple which is located near the Mahabaleshwara temple. I am right now in front of the Ganpati temple here at Gokarna. Please remember to wear a dhoti when entering inside. The version of the story here is that Lord Ganesha in disguise as a boy kept the linga on the earth and Ravana could not lift it. Angered, Ravana takes a stone and hits Ganesha on the head. Hence, the Ganesha statue here has a hole on top of the head. Koti Tirtha is surrounded on all sides by beautiful temples and age-old architecture of Gokarna. Koti Tirtha is said to be the source of thousand springs according to the local folklore. This pond attracts visitors who visit the famed Mahabaleshwar temple to perform rituals and show reverence to the ancestors. Tambra Gauri temple is within the premises of the Mahabaleshwar temple. People visit this place for the Asthi Visarjan. This is the Anjaneya Janmasthana. This small cave caught my attention, which dark inside. We are now heading towards the Shiva cave. You need to walk around 300 meters toward this cave. That small entrance looks like the cave. Let me enter inside the cave. Well, I see some footwear and hear some voices too. People are inside. This sunray is coming from this hole here. This hole keeps this cave ventilated and illuminated. Amazing. This is that ventilation through which the sunlight comes inside the cave. That's the beauty of the nature. This beautiful place attracted us and we decided to explore this. We really loved this place and it was later that we realized that this also leads to the Jatayu Tirtha from here. Even though I got to know that Jatayu Tirtha was closed, the curiosity how this path leads to the Jatayu Tirtha was very high in me. So I decided to explore this. Okay, thanks, Anna. I was sad that I couldn't go near the Jatayu Tirtha but happy that I have come all the way at least closer to this Jatayu Tirtha. Maybe next time. During the time of my visit to Gokarna, it was raining and the beach trek was closed. I would highly encourage the viewers to not miss this trek. You start from Paradise Beach and then move towards Half Moon Beach, Home Beach, Kudle Beach and the Gokarna Beach. The trek distance is around 9 kilometers. As it was raining, we also missed the water sports as it was closed. One can otherwise enjoy water sports such as banana ride, the motorboat ride from the Om Beach or the Kudli Beach. Now if the next question how to explore this place is running in your mind, then I have created one more detailed video to answer this query of yours. In the other video, I will give you different options to explore Gokarna. Be it a bicycle, bike, auto or a cab, I will give you all the information where to rent from and the contact details of those agencies so that you can contact them directly. Just click on the link above and don't miss to watch this video please. Now if the question where to stay in Gokarna is coming up in your mind, not to worry. There is not just one, two or three options I am giving but 12 different options of stay be it a tent, dormitory, hotel, homestay or a resort 
all categories and class of stay i have provided a very detailed information whether you are traveling solo family or in a group all the information you will find in the other video just click on the link above and don't miss to watch this video please now what about the food if you want to experience some local delicacies and experience the local culture you can try some of these restaurants where we ate being a vegetarian these are the places we tried the very first day we had the meal or the prasada at the temple premises itself the lunch was free and you can make donation if you wish to the food was simple and good i just uh, finished the dinner here at uh, santripti veg uh, to my taste buds uh, probably i will say it is uh, kind of an average we had our breakfast and dinner here at the pai hotel very near the temple i must say the food was good on the third day we tried at the pai restaurant and you will enjoy the food here both the pai hotels are good here i can say you have decided on the place hotel and options to commute in gokarna but how much is it going to cost an approximate budget for the trip i have flashed on the screen again some of these expenses are very very subjective this is just an information that i have provided i do hope you like the information provided in this video and it helps you in making a decision to plan a trip to gokarna do subscribe to the channel and share the link with others this is rakesh jain thank you once again